Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now. Back to another all new episode of PR from the Hearts Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. To be precise, we have reached episode number 37. That is the 37th bookcast, the 37th Neighborly Reviews Bookcast here at PR from the Heart. And we are super excited to spend some quality time with all of you. Coming off the heels of our three year anniversary celebration, my name is John Massalonis, the manager of PR from the Heart and the co host of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. Joining me, as always, is my faithful furry friend and companion, Little Forrest. And of course, you remember him, you love him as the beloved Mr. McFeely on the popular long-running children's television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. We know him and we love him as David Newell. David Spring has sprung on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. The temperatures are starting to get a little bit warmer. We are just one book cast away from spending some quality time together in studio with our good friends at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh. But we have an excellent book cast to share with parents and caregivers and grandparents and educators and all little ones across the country and all around the world dedicated to two very special children's authors and two very special physicians in the process. So happy spring to you, David. Well, thank you. It's raining here in Pittsburgh, and I see flowers popping up. So uh, spring is here around the corner. I think it's one of my favorite times of year because I can see uh, little bits of daffodils coming up, and it's only uh, March here in Pittsburgh. So uh, I hope the frost stays away. At any rate, we have we have quite a lineup of books today to, to talk about. I've made notes, and you'll uh, give a little uh, intro there of what we're doing, right? That is correct. And of course, as always, before we begin each and every book as we take care of some housekeeping here. This is me pretending to sweep the studios here at PR from the heart using a little broom emoji, so to speak. But if you are new to the program, what David and I, we take the time to do along with Little Forrest is each and every month as a little tip of the cap to his character, Mr. McFeely on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, we deliver new heartfelt reviews from some of the new children's books, from some of the top award-winning and best-selling children's authors in the published realm and the self-published realm as well too, David, as we like to say here on the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, we believe that everyone puts their pants on one leg at a time. So it's great <laughs> to be able to support self-published authors as well as published authors. And most importantly, to let parents and educators know of these resources of care that are available. We're not here to be able to provide harsh criticisms we're here to be able to simply let parents and educators know what is available on the market, especially as right now this is a really powerful time for little ones because you have March, you have April, and you have May, and then sooner than we know it, it's the back to school season. So providing these books that we take the time to go over each and every month, and which by the way, if you've missed our previous 36 bookcast episodes, you can check those out via our official website, prfromtheheart.com and via our official YouTube channel. But it's great to know that parents and educators, they don't have to do it alone. They don't have to search for the books on their end of things. This is one of the primary reasons why we offer the Neighborly Reviews bookcast each and every month. That's right, and we have three special books today and i'm and i'm about to get into uh describing them but i think you have a little update on the the authors right yes yes and one other brief housekeeping note before we begin technically two housekeeping notes as well too each and every month we are proud to be able to pledge our support for reading is fundamental pittsburgh now they are the pittsburgh chapter of the national non-for-profit children's literacy organization that provides children's books, developmental resources, and most importantly, they care. They too, in their own way, provide resources of care for children that come from low-income families in Pittsburgh. Did you know that last year alone, Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh delivered over 100,000 children's books to over 23,000 children in need? They provide a great resource. And so again, each and every month, we are proud and privileged and honored to be able to pledge our support for the good folks at Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh. And we encourage you to do the same as you feel guided to do so, to head on over to their official website, riffpittsburgh.org. 
As we like to say here on the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, no donation is too large, no donation is too small, because again, David, there are parents, there are educators that cannot afford to be able to purchase children's books in the process. And so, of course, as there are many children in Pittsburgh that do need a little bit of a leg up, they need some help, we're doing our part to be able to do our part on our end of things to let our listeners and our viewers know about the great work at Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh so they can do their part to be able to deliver more developmental resources, more literacy tools, more children's books to children in need so that those numbers continue to rise in terms of, of the number of books that they give. And hopefully there will come a point in time where that number will will lower in terms of the number of children that are in need but unfortunately it still is a very high number and of course one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for david for little forest for i for us here at the neighborly reviews bookcast is to subscribe to pr from the hearts official youtube channel and to share this very special trolley stop that you are now enjoying that is episode number 37 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. So yes, David, the trolley is going to be racking up some mileage, but we're going to be experiencing some sunny weather. And not just because we the, the trolley always starts off in San Diego. So Little Forest and I, we hop aboard the trolley. We travel all across the country to where you are in Pittsburgh. And then we go to the beautiful sunny city of Miami, Florida. And that is where we will find best-selling children's authors, the co-creators of the groundbreaking Medical School for Kids series, some of the newest members of the PR from the Heart family, Dr. Betty Wynn and Dr. Brandon Fahm have released these amazing children's books. They have 24 and counting as part of their groundbreaking new best-selling Medical School for Kids book series today. We're going to be placing the spotlight, sharing and reviewing three of the books in the Medical School for Kids series today. We're going to be starting off with Dermatology for Kids. Then we're going to be shifting into Ophthalmology for Kids because Dr. Betty Nguyen is a resident dermatologist on her end of things. And then Dr. Brandon, Dr. Brandon Pham, her not only a partner in life, but also the co-creator together of the series. So like they're engaged to be married. How absolutely adorable is that? <laughs> so, so Dr. Pham is an esteemed ophthalmologist resident on his end of things. And then we will close out with Hooray I See, the doctor today. Wasn't sure if you were aware of this, David, but approaching at the end of the month, I believe on March 30th is National Doctor's Day. And one of the things that we've seen throughout the course of the past couple of years, especially coming out of the pandemic, doctors are really important. Everyone within the medical realm is important as well too. And these books provide such great support for kids so they can learn about medicine and health in a very kid-friendly, fun way. Because when you learn about the body, when you learn about health, when you learn about medicine, it can seem very overwhelming. There's a lot of intricate terms and intricate systems. And so Dr. Betty and Dr. Brandon are doing their part to kidify. I guess that I'm, I'm making up that word, they're kidifying. <laughs> that's, that's a new word, kidify. <laughs> kidify. So we're going to be starting off with Dermatology for Kids, a charmingly simple introduction to the largest organ of the body, David, which is the skin. I think that many of us tend to forget that, that the skin, right, all the way around, the skin is actually the largest organ of the body. So let's dive in, let's crack the cover and dive inside the pages of Dermatology for Kids. Again, the first installment of the Medical School for Kids book series that we're going to be sharing here on the March 2024 episode of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. Okay, well, dermatology on the first page, or close to the first page, is defined as a branch of medicine concerned with the study and treatment of disorders and diseases of the skin. So they that set off right away. And it's interesting, there's a small disclaimer that the contents of the book are for information purposes only and no material in the book is intended to to provide or be a substitute for medical advice so they're saying this this is an intro but you need to see your doctor for medical advice the book is not considering itself as medical advice but it's an intro so uh well the first illustration shows a young girl uh telling the reader that our entire body is uh, covered in skin. You just uh, related to that too. And uh, on the next pages, uh, 
She says that the job of the skin is to protect the body. And then there are examples of what she means that the skin protects us from getting too cold or for too hot and protects us from germs and so forth. Well, the book I think is probably designed for early elementary. Uh, it could be read to preschoolers, but I think on a different level, probably uh, more acquainting them with uh, with the topic. But I think some of the terms early elementary would understand. Well, there is an illustration showing that the skin is made up of three layers, epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. I hope I have that correct. And the outer layer is epidermis. In fact, you know, the book is useful to adults too. In fact, I learned, I learned a lot by reading this book. Uh, I learned that a word. Now here I am trying to pronounce this correctly. It's melanocytes, melanocytes, right? Melanocytes. Correct. And it makes melanin, which is a pigment that gives us our skin color. And on the following pages, there's an illustration of children's playing and each one has a different color of skin. So less melanin, lighter skin, and more melanin, darker skin. And that illustration is very clear, and I think that would be interesting for, I never thought of it that way. But, uh, oh, the next two pages, uh, the middle layer is featured in an illustration, and that's the dermis. And that's where the hair follicles and sweat glands and nerves, and that they live in the dermis. So that is explained, uh, and but it's difficult to describe all the illustration in the illustrations in the book because some get a little technical, but uh, it does explain. So the illustrations explain what I'm describing. So I'll let the reader do some of that. Oh, oh, the inner layer. This is interesting. That and I made an association here. The inner layer of skin is illustrated in the next. Uh, five few pages and the inner layer is called the hypodermis now <laughs> that is probably why a needle is called a hypodermic needle because it reaches into the inner layer of the, of the skin with some medicine and there are te other technical terms i've skipped but i'm trying to give an overview of the book without getting too bogged down with uh, explaining every term that's in the book and, and and moving on through the book, the illustrations uh, show children to play. And when, when we go outside, our skin absorbs energy from the sun. And that's called vitamin D, the, the precious vitamin D. And um, but too much sun can burn our skin. That's a, a warning in the book. And another illustration shows a girl saying that there is good news because our skin can repair itself and make a new layer of skin every month. And I didn't know that. I knew it could repair itself, but I didn't even know we had a new layer of skin every month. And the sun, as people probably know by now, can cause melanoma, which is a type of the skin cancer. And there's a page described, describing a mole, uh, which is a dark, part, part, a dark spot on the skin and it suggests that the reader can check moles on their bodies for melanoma. And this is helpful because the next pages show various types of moles and it shows the reader how to compare a normal mole with one that is a melanoma mole. And the illustrations show various shapes of mole, moles. So you can look at these and, and, and uh, compare them with moles you might have on your body. Now, uh, I found this to be very helpful. Just going to that page, if you have any doubts that you see a mole on your skin, you can go to this page and see where it falls. And if there is some cancer, then do something about it. And the last few pages of the book suggest that people should wear a hat and sunscreen when in the sun. You know, that, that's very important. And I, I remember one time my grandparents took me to Miami and we went immediately out. This was in the summer. We'd been immediately out, immediately in, into the, onto the beach. And my grandfather got uh, a terrible case of sunburn. Mm. Just, 
And uh, I remember the rest of the vacation he spent uh, in in the hotel room because it was a bad bad uh, a bad case of sunburn. So that's just a little hint. Now let me see where we are here. Oh, yes. And the next to the last page has has the girl saying to the reader that dermatologists help people with skin disorders to look and feel better, and that's the job of the dermatologist. And on the last page, uh, the the authors say to the reader, "You're a future." Dermatologist, <laughs> and there's a glossary of terms that were used in the book at the end. And、um, let's see what there are. Oh, there's a a, a a list of terms, and then you can guess what they might be. And there's another page to revite to write your、uh, review answers. So there's a follow up to the the book and all of the terms used in the book. And、uh, I would think that、uh, if you're reading it to a A child, I, I know. I think a, a, a elementary child could read through this, but they may need some help in some of the terms, and it could be used in a classroom too. I think as a, a book about the the skin, and go through it as a as a as a class or individually. But I think it's a very helpful book, especially the page that helps the reader identify different moles, and see if they might be a you know have cancer or not. Generally speaking, no, but it's always good to check. So that is the first book in the series、uh, about dermatology.、Yes. The next one, the next one. Well, you have a comment. Well, Any I, comments you want to add? And, and first off, great, great sharing of of the story. And there's there's so many things about this particular book that I enjoy in the series overall. But I know that you made a, a call to action at the very end. How, at the end of this book and and many of the books that are found within the medical school for kids series, there's a section titled "Let's review what you learn." So indeed, I loved how you shared how this can be used in a classroom setting. So in essence, you know, like I remember growing up, and you know, there was science class and science, in certain respects, maybe not all the time, but science was kind of boring. You know, because you know you're learning about some things where it's just like, well, you know, it's not fun, right? So one of the things that I really love about the Medical School for Kids book series, especially dermatology for kids, it makes something that could seem very meh be very fun, right? You know, you take a look at, at the illustrations that are there, like you know, for example,、um, at the very end, it says everyday dermatologists help patients with skin disorders to look, feel, and get better. So again, there's, there's, you know, it's, there's, there's, there's so much、uh, good energy that's found within these books as well too. Because again, when, when you're learning about things in school, I can only imagine, you know, kids come home and they talk to their mom and dad, their brother, their sister, their grandma, their grandpa, and they say, "How was school today?" And they say, "Well, you know, we learned about the skin, right?" And it can just seem very like, okay, right? But if you say, "But I learned about the skin in a super cool, fun way," thanks to Dr. Betty Nguyen and Dr. Brandon Fum, the Medical School for Kids series, I can imagine、like、you go to the page that's opposite the page that I just mentioned, and you see there's four kids together. They're all hugging, and it says, "Skin can have many different colors. No matter the color, we all need skin to keep us safe. Every every little child can have that smile." Beaming on their face as well too, and again, just making it very simple at the same point in time. Because again, when you're talking about, I, I had alluded to this previously, when you're talking about different organs, different systems, different parts of the body, there's a lot of intricacies, and this is the reason why you know doctors go to school for as long as they do because there's so much to learn. So much to absorb, and the fact that again, because we're going to be shifting from dermatology, which is Dr. Betty's specialty, over to Dr. Brandon's specialty, which is ophthalmology. And of course, for those who are, you know, keeping track at home, ophthalmology is the eye doctors that do wonderful jobs all across the country and all around the world. So, as we've already mentioned, there literally is a book. For everything, for everything you can possibly imagine, in the medical school for kids book series, which, which by the way, again, also if you want to take the time to purchase your copy of Dermatology for Kids, we'll be mentioning this for all of the books as well too. You can head on over 
to Dr. Brandon and Dr. Betty's official website, mdforkids.org, that we have included in the description below. You can also leave a five-star review on amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing. One of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Dr. Betty and Dr. Brandon is to leave a five-star review, not only for Dermatology for Kids, but for the entire collection that is the medical school for kids book series so again we'll be diving into we'll be cracking the cover and diving into the pages <laughs> book number two here on the march 2024 neighborly reviews bookcast david let us shift into ophthalmology for kids which again it is a charmingly simple introduction to the organ that allows you to see the eye and of course i'm pointing to my eyes over here we've got left and right eyes we both have two eyes which is always a good thing as well too david as in the other book, uh, Dermatology for Kids is uh, is defined at the beginning, and there's also uh, the disclaimer again that this book is not meant as a, a, it's just informational for kids, but you should see your doctor with any questions. And oh, I think, by the way, the last uh, dermatology, I think one of the takeaways is when you're out in the sun, protect yourself. I think you can sum that sum the book up with that's a, a safety and it's very important at any rate uh, here we are and dermatology is the branch of medicine concerned with the study and, and treatment of disorders and diseases of the eye and of course this disclaimer is there too about seeing a doctor the book is no substitute for medical advice but it opens with an illustration of a young boy looking at a beautiful view of mountains and rivers and the caption says the eye is an organ that lets us see the world and the following pages are illustrations of the eye showing the cornea and the sclera sclera i believe sclera is that the uh, i hope i'm pronouncing that right and they both protect the eye and the cornea is the front clear layer of the eye that helps focus light onto the back of the eye. And that's, there's illustrations. And the slary is the outer white layer of the eye that covers the rest of the eye. So it's the white that you see. And behind the cornea is the iris, which is the color part of the eye. And that sort of sets up the uh, explanation of the eye in a very clear way, I believe, with illustrations. And, and there's another illustration that shows a group of children uh, and it says that irises can be many different colors. And you think of it, there'd be brown, blue, gray, hazel, amber, all of those. And, and then I'd ask the readers, and I like this when they ask the reader, well, what color are your irises? And uh, at this point, a parent or a teacher could stop and uh, they're reading the book and talk about eye color. Well, what do you, what's the color of your eye? If you're reading it to uh, a child, or uh, when next time you uh, meet your friends, uh, check out the color of their eyes. You know, that's, that's, I like that little, uh, little addition there. Oh, and then the reader can see in the next illustration that indicates a small opening called the pupil. The pupil allows light to enter the eye. And, and I think the illustrations are so helpful in showing the function of the eye. Uh, bright light, pupil becomes smaller, and in dim light, the pupil becomes larger. And it's I, these are the basics. I think there's it's much more intricate, but I think it's clear to the reader uh, about the function of the eye. Right. Oh, and then next illustration shows the lens, and behind the iris, which is clear, and that helps focus light into the back of our eyes now i hope i'm not getting too technical here but the if you get the book this will all come, be much more clear when you see the illustrations and they go on to describe other parts of the eye including the retina that allows us to see and the next two pages were fascinating to me uh, the illustration shows normal eyes and then explains nearsightedness and farsightedness farsightedness <laughs> in in two pages this difficult subject is summed up by by clear illustrations and then uh, oh and, and nearsightedness and farsightedness can be corrected by people wearing glasses so the uh, that's the 
that's the uh, the job of the ophthalmologist is to visit that and see if you're you're nearsighted and suggest that you maybe you need glasses. In the next few pages, it describes cataracts and says when people get older, they may develop cataracts, and as, as a result, cataracts can cause blurry vision. And, and people with cataracts uh, may have trouble driving a car at night, but now with new technology, there's cataract surgery and it helps people see clearer again. And then there's uh, macular degeneration as described as well as uh, glaucoma and uh, other diseases in, of the eye that uh, are talked about. But I'll let that chore again go to the reader to find out more about the, uh, more in detail when you read the book, you'll find out more. But my point is that all of these, I guess you could call them diseases or trouble or function of the eyes are described quite clearly in, in the book. We'll be here another hour if I try to describe them. But uh, the illustrations do an excellent job of describing those disorders. Oh, in the last several pages, there's an illustration of a young girl taking eye drops, which a lot of kids have to do, and that lowers the pressure in the eye and helps maintain vision. So if you do have a, an eye disorder, sometimes there is an eye drop, and, and children are a little apprehensive about that, but I think it would be helpful to see in the book if children are reading this. Now, this book, I think, uh, is also probably for early elementary, but again, you can read it to a preschooler and uh, do the best you can to interpret it. And uh, let me see, oh, and the, on the last page of the story, it says, every day ophthalmologists help people see clearly again. And uh, then it says, I like this when it ends up with, you're a future ophthalmologist, ophthalmologist. And again, in this book, there's a glossary of terms at the end of the book, and uh, you can test your memory quiz is there. So it's an excellent book to learn about the eye, you know, and it's also excellent for adults, too. I think if an adult wants to understand the function of the eye, this is the book to get. And again, I think it would be a wonderful book to use in a, in a classroom a teacher if they could take some of the illustrations and you could blow them up somewhat or just hold the book up to the class or get a book for each student it would be very helpful in in health class because it really sums up the function of of the the eye very well in a very clear clear way so i guess my point and, is and, 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 <laughs> get it, and get it a very clear way full full pun intended right <laughs> and, um, i i I appreciate you you sharing all this, David, because you know this is actually one of my favorite books in the Medical School for Kids series. Because just one of the things at the at the very end of the story, there's there's a couple of things I want to point out is is that there's something very powerful about the phrase "everyday opt" uh, the the phrase in the sentence I should say "everyday ophthalmologists help people see clearly again." I can just imagine there's children around the world that are reading this story, just that one page, and they say, "Wow." they really help people make a difference. They help people see clearly again, like if there is a career that a child decides to pursue based on mission and, 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 and purpose in helping people, like that's a great privilege and honor and blessing to be able to help people see again. You know, whether it be someone who is you know, uh, who is who is elderly or just maybe struggling with, you know, vision issues for their entire lives. Ophthalmologists really do make a very clear difference, again, full pun intended, in the lives of, of many. I love the fact on how you were talking about the different, the different facets of the eye as well too, because again, when you have this book in the hands of kids, I feel it's a little bit different. And, and again, maybe this is just the inner child in me speaking. But again, I can imagine, you know, me growing up and learning about this. We've got, we had, you know, the big clunky science books. Now, bear in mind, I was born in 81. So when I was learning about this, it was late 80s, early 90s, right? And it's like, I can just imagine if I'm given ophthalmology for kids, 
there's something connective about when kids hold children's books. And again, the illustrations, the illustrations are great. They really help. They're very engaging. It seems like, again, that kids can be even more focused. Get it? That's another seeing, you know, analogy, right? But kids can be more focused and more connected and learning about these things than maybe, you know, the, the, the older school kind of textbooks, right? Kind of thing as well, too. And this is Dr. Brandon and Dr. Betty, the, the fact, one of the reasons, uh, two of the reasons why I wanted to be able to, you know, to take the time to share these two books of the three in the March 2024 installment of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. This is what they do every day on their end of things. And this is a fascinating thread, David, the fact that they, their journey is literally just beginning. They are in the process of finishing up their residency. So they're literally just stepping into their life's purpose and they're doing it at a at a relatively young age young mm -hmm. ages on their end of things as well too and again when we think of health and we think of wellness we think of you know of, and and there is a book called in the series called cardiology for kids we think of gastroenterology the stomach and the digestive system right but every once in a while we might kind of forget about the skin and we might forget about the eye right so it's really important how there's you know that we're we're doing our part to be able to let kids know that like we have different parts of ourselves that all work together to make us functional each and every day so again just as we mentioned with dermatology for kids we're also doing the same for ophthalmology for kids you can head on over to dr betty and dr brandon's official website which we have included in the description below you can also head on over to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing leave a five-star review for ophthalmology for kids Again, these are just some of the ways that you can pledge your support for Dr. Betty, Dr. Brandon, Dr. Nguyen, Dr. Fox, to let them know that they're doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and all future doctors. Because this is one of the things as well, maybe one of the, the top things that I really love about their series is the fact that they are creating, in many respects, the next generation of doctors, the next generation of healthcare heroes on their end of things. And in the research that I've been doing with my work with Dr. Wynn and Dr. Pham is the fact that there is actually a physician shortage in many respects in different states all across the country. So what can we do as parents and caregivers and custodians of little ones is to be able to, just like we let parents and educators know that these books are available we can do our part to let our children know the different kinds of careers that are available so that they can make the decision and choose what they feel works best for them. Yes, you, you know, and also the, uh, the, when children feel good about themselves, this is the, it's sort of from the emotional part, you want to take care of yourself too. That's and true. in turn, these books would be just valuable for uh, for for all many good reasons i would buy them so i could learn that's they they explain it so well to an to, for an adult who we don't know that much about uh, our eyes or uh, our hearing and these books really help and and going to the doctor is sometimes a traumatic experience for young children so preparing them for that first visit is what the next book does in explaining what a doctor does correct then this is the third and final installment but not the third and final book in the medical school for kids book series this is of course because again we could be here for many hours talking about all <laughs> 24 plus books and counting in the medical <laughs> school for kids series but again we're going to be sharing hooray i see the doctor today and I, I have to say when when i saw this book released it made me think of you automatically even before we talked about having you know these books being featured in the program because i know that this was a very important thing for fred and that i believe if i'm not mistaken you know that he wrote a book or books kind of tied into this theme and that he dedicated one or multiple episodes if i'm not mistaken about kids seeing the doctor for the first and that that was really important to to mr rogers was it not david it, it was we did uh, we did a book but we did 
visits to the doctor and various medical visits to the hospital on the program. They were integrated into the series too. And, and Fred Rogers was a, a firm believer in uh, talking about first time, first experiences were, were very important to him. The first time you'd see a doctor to let children know that they're going to the doctor and try to prepare them in some way. And that's what uh, this this book does. Uh, Hooray, I see the doctor. So I, should we just jump into it? Oh, yep. into the... I already have oh. cracked the cover and now we're diving okay. into the piece of Hooray, <laughs> I see the doctor today. Well, what I like about it, it's a, it's a rhyming picture book that guides children through a doctor visit from start to finish. That's the, and it's a reassuring message. It is designed to help children when they might be worried about a visit to the doctor, especially the first visit, which is very important. Well, the book opens with a colorful illustration of a father taking his daughter to the doctor. And the, the, uh, the little girl says, hooray, it's a special important day Time to see the doctors, your parents say. You can say there's the rhyming. And, and, and uh, as they approach the medical center, the father says, sometimes when you're sick, if you want to feel better, doctors just the trick. Doctors know just the trick. And I like, I like the, the use of verse because I think the rhyming may take the edge off and apprehension of going to the doctor the first time if you plan to take your child to a doctor and you read this book you're still not at the doctor but i think the rhyming may may help a little bit i don't know that's just my take on it um and you know i'm sure that many children worry about going to the doctor and what's going to happen at the doctor's office and uh, the reader is reassured that you see the doctor as you grow up just to make sure your body is developing in a healthy way and that's 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 stressed in the book and there are illustrations of the doctor's office and the waiting room and that have other children waiting to see the doctor which is important and the little girl sees other children at the doctor's office and uh, i think that helps because she won't feel so alone because other children are there who need to see the doctor too be patient while you wait that's stressed you know you have to wait to get your turn and uh, then the nurse calls her name hooray she says the little girl says hooray i'm going to see the doctor now and the next few pages show the uh, the nurse and the nurse might check your weight and your height and your temperature as well as your hearing and your blood pressure all of those may be checked when you see the doctor and an illustration shows the blood pressure being checked, which and explains that the cuff around your arm will squeeze tight, but that's no car, cause for alarm. And that I remember, I remember when I first got my blood pressure taken, I couldn't quite figure out what it felt like your arm was growing or something. And I was concerned about that. Now, if had I read this book, if it had a little preparation, I would have realized what was going on. But I think that's helpful to, to break it down, even to the blood pressure. And a, a child would, uh, that would be helpful. Well, then the nurse takes the little girl and her dad to meet the doctor. And I like this. The authors have the nurse being a man and the doctor a woman. They're, they're, that's 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 very up to date i think agreed and uh, and then it explains how doctors spend years in school learning how the body works that's what you were, you were talking about earlier and on the next several pages there are illustrations of the doctor checking the little girl's lungs and heart and then explains the doctor might look inside your mouth and your nose and that may perform a uh, physical exam from your head to your toes. <laughs> and one illustration shows the girl getting a, a needle shot. Now this is, can be traumatic for, I mean, I don't think a lot of adults <laughs> would be helped by reading this book. And the explanation is, well, the shot might sting a bit, but it protects you from harm. And I think that is one of the 
for young children, the scariest thing is the is the needle, and it does have a little sting. But if this book is read beforehand, I think that at least prepares the child, and it's not a surprise. And the authors reassure the reader that if you are feeling sick, you might get some medicine to make you feel better. And as the girl and her father are leaving the doctor's office, there's a reminder to the reader, and I call it the best advice in the book. And it is, if you ha have questions, if you have questions, ask the doctor before you go. Whatever you'll learn is important to know. That is so such good advice. Ask questions. You know, you know, I try to take, when I go to the doctors, I try to make a, a list and, and check it off. And, you know, I, I've been doing that, but that's a, that's a, and if you don't quite understand what they say, uh, ask questions. And that's an, that's an important, and not only for the child, but that's important advice to the adult who's taking the child to the, uh, the doctor's office. Oh, and the last two pages has a wonderful illustration of a girl and her father walking to the car and the girl exclaims, <laughs> hooray, I saw the doctor today. And that was the uh, adventure of the little girl to the, to the doctor's office. And I think it was, uh, oh, it's an excellent book for just the preparation of going to the doctor for the first time or for the second time or third time. It, it never hurts to read it before you go to the doctor. This is, and, I, and I'm, I'm so glad that we are integrating this book as part of our discussion, as part of our, our Neighborly Reviews bookcast for the month of March here, March 2024, David, because this book is very, it, it, it's, it's really fun. In many respects, it's fun, it's educational, and you can tell it's a little bit different from the other books as well, too, because the other books are more informational based, right? Yes. Where it's ophthalmology for kids and dermatology for kids and all the other titles that are in the series. But there are a few titles in the series like Hooray, I See the Doctor Today, which again, as we talked about, not only kids can have fears of going to the doctor, but I can only imagine, and again, you know, I'm a dog dad, so maybe I can see this through the lens of being a dog dad. When I take force to the to the veterinarian, to the vet, there's times where I have questions, right? And I can yes. have some fears and insecurities. So again, a little bit different when you have a dog, but it's still kind of the same premise, so to speak. So if there's moms or dads, or if there's uh, grandparents, you know, cause there's many grandparents that are taking care of kids, you know, based on different family dynamics and situations, it's important to let the kids know that everything is going to be okay. And that's one of the things that I love that you and Fred and everyone on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood did together is, you know, even though life is not easy, right? And even though there's challenges during the way, the fact that there are trusted adults, neighbors that are in your life, that are in the lives of children that will help them whenever they need. So it's, I, I could just literally feel like as I'm reading the book, I'm like, man, like, Mr. Rogers would just totally love this. He'd be totally yes. advocating for hooray, I see the doctor today. And again, this is something where if let's say maybe having that conversation with your child is a little bit difficult uh, about, you know, going to the doctor, you can take the time and read this. Yes. Little one before you go to the doctor, because it's a matter of if a child hasn't experienced something yet, Right. And if they kind of have a little bit of an idea, maybe it's not blow by blow the exact same thing, but to say, okay, this is what's going to be happening. Here's what you can be expecting. It brings down the anxiety, the trepidation, because they are, they have an idea of what it is that they're going to be experiencing. And it's important, not, not even just for kids, but us as adults, that going to the doctor doesn't have to be a scary experience because, you know, many times when you go to the doctor, you can automatically, we're kind of programmed and wired to automatically think worst case scenario. Yes. Whenever we go to, a, to the doctor. And it's important to know that doctors are there 
for you and it's also important you know to be able to then you know who is the best doctor for you as well too you know there's a there's a term that i you that that i learned you know growing up as as a kid even though i wasn't i wasn't a, around when the series was was there if you remember the show little house on the prairie and oh yeah, yes i believe one of the characters in the show was a doctor he i remember him having a good bedside manner as the expression went like back in the day so to speak so just knowing the fact that there are trusted doctors that are out there not even just you know regular regular physicians you know that just we go to for the checkups but there's the dermatologists there's the ophthalmologists there's the cardiologists there's the pulmonologists there's the endro uh, endocrinologists right so if you're navigating through hormonal issues on your end of things there are so many different doctors that are out there. And I also love the fact that it is a rhyming picture book, David, because yes. one thing about the rhyming, the flow, it really helps to, oh, you know, it's you're, you, you have more of that connective thread and that connective experience through the story. And it helps to keep not only the kid's attention, but when the little one is being read to by their mom, their dad, their grandma, their grandpa, their teacher, it keeps it, it it creates more of that connective thread not only just with the story but with whoever is reading the the book to the child as well oh i feel the same way it, it's a great connection because it uh the rhyming i i think it does take some of the uh concern away the the rhyming when you're showing this or reading the book to the child and i that's and and i didn't it's hard to get that in talking about the book, but it does it does rhyme, and uh, it's like you know, it's like singing a, a song to the child in a way uh, about the doctor. You're going to the doctor and sing them. You know, this is not the best analogy, but I had a friend speaking about prepping for going to different places. Going to school is very can be very traumatic too, and I had a friend when. Uh, he was little. They lived next door to the school. And when he was school age, first grade, I guess, his father said, took him to the window and said, you see that building over there? That's where you're going tomorrow. That was his preparation for going to school. And, you know, the, the, the parent, I think, was thinking that's being helpful you're going to school but it, you know it's there's we've learned so much agreed about co communications with children and and their needs and what they comprehend at a, at a younger age so books like this are very helpful i wasn't aware of all of the uh, books that uh, betty and brandon have in their in their series so we're just tipping tipping the iceberg here yes. right with the books they're this, this, More is to come. this is literally a mere fraction of the <laughs> books that are available. So again, we encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars, you can head on over to the official website of Dr. Betty Nguyen and Dr. Brandon Pham. Again, the Medical School for Kids book series, mdforkids.org. And in addition, of course, you can also stay connected with them on social media as well, too. They're very interactive on social media. I'm very fortunate to be able to work with the both of them for uh, for a national book tour. They were just recently featured on the CBS affiliate in Miami. And there are so many other things that are just on the horizon as well for them as well, too. There, this is something in the, in the 10 years that I have worked with children's authors doing PR publicity work. I've never seen anything like this out there on the market in the way in which they're sharing it and in the way in which that they're doing it as well too. Again, you can also head on over to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing. Again, that's one of the many ways while you're there, you can leave five star reviews for Dermatology for Kids, Ophthalmology for Kids, and Hooray, I See the Doctor today. That again, those again are just some of the ways you can pledge your support for Dr. Betty, Dr. Brandon. Let them know that they're doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, those who love great children's books, and all future doctors all across the country and all around the world. And when you take the time, by the way, to go to their official website, mdforkids.org, you can literally see when you scroll on their website, you can see all of the books that are available. And literally, again, in terms of, I know we touched upon this earlier, 
in our time together, David, but this literally can be a school curricula in many mm -hmm. respects. And that's one of the great things about specific children's books is, is that sometimes teachers can be scratching their heads and say, I wonder how I talk to my students about blah, 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 right? So if you're introducing your students to the world of health and medicine, you want to be able to do it in a very fun, friendly, kidified way, right? The medical school, uh, the medical school series for kids is literally right at your fingertips. And you can be able to have so much fun with your students in the process. As we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go, but fear not, there are many more magical trolley stops to come, which by the way, is we always like to share here through PR from the heart when Little Forest has the opportunity to enjoy books that him and I have the opportunity to, uh, to read together. He always gives two paws up for the books that he loves as well. So technically it's six paws up, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> if you factor in dermatology for kids and ophthalmology for kids and hooray, I see the doctor today. They are all endorsed by Little Forest, which of course, when you get the two paws up from Little Forest, it's one of the fastest growing endorsements in the world of children's literature. But we are super excited, by the way, because there's the, 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 the the many magical trolley stops to come. There's two of them of note. Let's put a brief pin on that as well too. If this episode of the, Na and we'll circle back to that thread momentarily. If this episode of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast has inspired you, if you have learned a lot, I know David, you've learned a lot today. I learned I did. a lot today. One of the many ways that you can pledge your support for us here at PR from the heart for us uh, here at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast for Dr. Betty and for Dr. Brandon is to subscribe to PR from the heart's official YouTube channel and share this very special trolley stop that you have been enjoying. That is episode number 37 of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast as well. Join the more than 10,000 members of the PR from the heart family, 10,000 plus subscribers on our official YouTube channel as well. If you are a children's author and would love for David and I to share your brand new book on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, it's hard to believe that we're going to be heading into the summer reading season, one of our favorite seasons here at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. And then sooner than we know it, it's going to be the back to school season. If you would like for David and I to be able to review, share, your brand new children's book and a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, be sure to head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, or connect with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter slash X in the process. And by the way, David, hard to believe, but after 10, nearly 10 years, we actually have our official brand new newsletter. So for those who want to get the earliest scoop so to speak, on which books that we're going to be sharing on forthcoming editions of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, that is your go-to source. It is, again, you can log on to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, subscribe to our official newsletter. You get a special free gift in the process. And in fact, if you are a children's author, we have included some special, simple, yet powerful spring PR publicity tips. So simply by subscribing to the PR From The Heart YouTube channel, you obviously become a member of the PR from the Heart family that way by subscribing to our official newsletter. You get a free gift as well. How super cool is that when you get a free gift for anything in the process as well too? And of course, specifically tied into the bookcast, David, our next two trolley stops. I'll be joining you as always. It's always great to spend some quality time with our friends and neighbors at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh. Our April and our May Neighborly Reviews bookcasts are gonna be looking a little bit different than the virtual remote ones that you see regularly. So again, we're going to be doing two in-studio episodes of the Neighborly Reviews bookcasts that we'll be spending. Uh, and little known fact, it may look like we're gonna be spending two full months in Pittsburgh, but in essence, you know, through, through the magic of, of of reporting, it's going to we're we're basically taking care of those two episodes within within one time frame, so to speak. But we're going to be spending two full months together, David, for April and May. You know, if if I was to spend two months in any city across the country or around the world, Pittsburgh would be right atop the list. So we've got some really cool books that we're going to be sharing as part of the April and the May bookcast. And of course, one of the amazing things that we always love about the in studio neighborly reviews bookcast is we have the opportunities to 
to meet the authors, David. So we had the opportunities to have some heartfelt conversations in addition to actually discussing the books. And I know that that's one of your one of your things that you also enjoy about the bookcast is because we've met some amazing authors over the years that we've actually interviewed them in studio. That's right. And that will be happening in April and May, right? In, that in is my hometown of Pittsburgh. That's right. And it's going to be great to be in your neighborhood, as you like to say. And of course, there are many ways that we can also pledge our support for you if you are a children's author. We are super excited because we just cracked the code of 200 plus episodes of our Children's Books Spotlight series, which is one of the most popular, longest running podcasts in the world of children's literature. And a little exclusive, as we like to say here, through PR from the heart. Actually, David, I know that you're super excited for this interview as well, but together you and I are actually going to be interviewing New York Times best-selling children's author, the creator of the Ordinary People Change the World series, Brad Meltzer. He has released his newest installment, interestingly enough, called I Am Mr. Rogers. So there's gonna be a little, like, if you remember back in the day how like Laverne and Shirley started off on Happy Days, right? And yeah. then Laverne and Shirley branched off. We're gonna be seeing like Two Worlds Collide, the Neighborly Reviews book cast in the Children's Book Spotlight series. That episode is going to be premiering on April the 8th. So again, if you are a children's author and would love for me to be able to take the time to have a wonderful sit down conversation, be a part of a forthcoming installment of the, of the children's book spotlight series, you know where to connect with us. And of course, if you're a children's author and want to be able to share your inspiring story even further and reach more parents and caregivers, and grandparents and educators through the media by creating a book media tour in your city or a national book media tour, and of course, connect with different media outlets across the country. Let us see how we can be of service to you. You can head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, schedule your courtesy connection call. And again, we're, we're approaching our 10 year anniversary in the month of July, if I'm not mistaken. So it's really gonna, we're 2024 is shaping up to be the best year ever here at PR From The Heart. But again, one final time, the Medical School for Kids book series. It is all now, they're all now available. There's 24 books and counting in the series. Today, we had the chance to discuss and review and share Dermatology for Kids, Ophthalmology for Kids, and Hooray, I See the Doctor today. They're all now available. You can head on over to mdforkids.org. You can also head on over to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing. Again, some of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Dr. Betty and Dr. Brandon are by leaving five-star reviews for Dermatology for Kids, for Ophthalmology for Kids, and for Hooray, I See the Doctor today. And of course, remember, David, we're always huge proponents of local libraries and children's and right. independent bookstores. So when you take the time to visit your favorite local library or your favorite children's or independent bookstore, and if they do not stock their copies of the Medical School for Kids book series, make that kind recommendation in the process. That's that's when we do the, the little tip of the cap. That's the kind recommendation that we like to say here on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. But again, the trolley's been very patient. The trolley's excited because the trolley's going to be heading again from San Diego to Pittsburgh and the trolley is going to be staying there. The trolley loves being in Pittsburgh and being there for the months of April and May. And of course, we want to thank you for your continued support of PR from the heart, for your continued support of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, for your continued support of children's authors and illustrators all across the country and around the world, just like Dr. Betty Nguyen and Dr. Brandon Pham, who again are doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. For your continued support of local libraries and children's and independent bookstores, they're truly the pillars of our community. But above all else, we want to thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world. One final tip of the cap, David, you spend many years with him, many decades with him, of course. We feel the presence, the spirit of Mr. Rogers on each and every episode of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. He reminded us in many ways, shapes and forms of our inherent worth and our inherent value. He reminded us that we could be anything that we want to be. And in many respects, through his own private numerology, he also encouraged us to remember how loved that we are. Did you know that Mr. Rogers weighed 143 pounds for his entire natural adult life? 
well, there's one letter in I, there's four letters in love and three letters in you. So there must be something to all of that. So as David was kind enough to spend some time with us and his little force was kind enough to spend some time with us. And as you were kind enough to spend some time with us, all of our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course our fellow shining stars, we like to share our favorite three numbers of two, four, three. There's two letters in we, four letters in love, three letters in you. That is our reminder to you that you are loved, that you are whole, that you are healthy, that you are complete, that you are loved, that you are special beyond words, that we see you, we see your inherent worth and your inherent value, that we like you, that we love you just the way that you are. And also one last friendly reminder, be sure to continue to pledge your support for our friends and neighbors and reading is fundamental Pittsburgh. Once again, they are the, are they are the Pittsburgh affiliate of the national non-for-profit children's literacy organization. Of course, it is well-known and beloved across the country. They provide children's books, literacy tools, developmental resources for children that come from low-income families all across Pittsburgh, all around the city. Did you know that last year alone that Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh delivered over, over 100,000 children's books to over 23,000 children in need? So again, we encourage you to pledge your support no matter how large or how small to Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh by heading on over to riff riffpittsburgh.org. And again, no donation is too large. No donation is too small. So for Little Forest, for David Newell, for myself, John Massalonis, a heartfelt hug goes out to Dr. Betty Wynn and Dr. Brandon Fahm for allowing us to be able to share the Medical School for Kids book series. We've learned a lot. We've had a lot of fun in the process as well, too. Have a wonderful start to your spring. We look forward to seeing all of you once again very soon. But again, before we head out to Pittsburgh to spend the next two months together, the next two months together for our April and May Neighborly Reviews bookcast, again, be sure to mark that down that we are going to be joining us David and I together with New York Times bestselling children's author, Brad Meltzer. So that is actually going to be coming first, technically, if you follow along with everything at PR from the heart, that's gonna be coming first before we spend some quality time together at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh for our April and May bookcasts. So again, for Little Forest, for David Newell, for myself, John Massalonis, thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world, our fellow friends, fellow neighbors and our fellow shining stars goodbye for now bye <laughs>